Hey everybody. Hey everybody. Let's take a couple of minutes and let some people get on here so we can do some introductions. How's everybody doing? I want you guys to make sure that you are dropping your comments down below. If you ask us some questions. Um, all that good stuff. So important. Because I want to hear what everybody has to say. Today, um, for Moms Unscripted, we will be talking to Miss Ariel. Um, so she's going to jump on here at about 6 o'clock. Um, but yes, so that is her down below. I want you guys to make sure that you are following her. Um, because you're definitely going to want to keep up with her and all the things that she has uh, going on. Um, and so more importantly, um, let me just kind of do a quick intro for some of you guys who may not know me. Um, so my name is Chanel Scales and I am the mompreneur director here at uh, Control Magazine. And so, um, first of all, I'm so excited to be doing this because I am a mother. I have a two year old who is amazing. She keeps me on my toes. Um, but one of the things about being a mother or just being a parent in general, but definitely a mother is that um, motherhood does not come with directions. It does not come with instructions. Okay, so you find yourself really just trying to figure this thing out on a daily basis. Um, you know, and we all have our personal journeys. Um, we all go through certain things, but at the end of the day, you realize that what you're going through, nine out of 10, somebody else is going through it uh, too. Um, and it may not be the same situation. It may not be the same scenario, but at the end of the day, somebody just may have, um, you know, a similar story that could really help you get through whatever you're going through or just answer some questions so that you don't feel like, um, you are so alone. And so that's really what Moms Unscripted is about. It's about women who are just fearless and they're living in their truth um, and just being very transparent and, you know, and just being, being, being able to just be unscripted about their journey and really say what they're going through and, and say what some of their struggles are. Um, you know, right now we live in a world where I personally think women um, feel like they have to just kind of go, 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 go. Um, and they never really have those moments to say, you know what, damn, I am just having a rough day or today just wasn't one of those days or, you know, let me just pause and take a moment, you know, because that really is some of the things that I'm sure a lot of mothers, they do honestly want to say. OK, so um, every every Wednesday at six o'clock, you can find me here. Uh, eventually we will film this live, um, but you will be able to converse with me and some of these other amazing ladies that I will have um, and just really hear their stories. Okay, so before we get started, I don't know if you guys uh, went onto our website and got the recipe, but um, I am going to be sipping my cocktail. So this right here is called Blue Goddess. Um, and it was curated by um, a young lady named Brianna who has a mixology brand called Sips of Passion. So every week, okay, I want you to hear this. Every week, she is going to curate a cocktail for me and I am going to upload it on uh, Control's website so that you guys can sip cocktails with me, okay? Um, but yeah, so this one is called um, Blue Goddess. She actually made this one with... Um, a Riesling by Barefoot. So we used um, Barefoot Riesling and I know that she used um, a peach, like a peach. And I'm gonna say it wrong, so I'm not even gonna say it, but the, the, that blue when you're in the club and it mix a little bit of that blue, I can't even say it, so I'm not even gonna embarrass myself. And then she's got some peaches in there, some fresh peaches and some fresh strawberries. So this drink right here is called Blue Goddess. It's really, 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 really good. If you do not get the recipe for tonight, that's okay. It will be on the website. Um, so you guys can, um, excuse me, you guys can definitely go back and check it out, pull it up. Um, and like I said, every week, we will definitely have a cocktail of the week on there. Okay, so um, we've got about nine minutes before Miss Ariel jumps on. But I want to um, really 
just kind of introduce myself and tell you guys all about me and some of the things I do. So yes, I am the mompreneur director here at Control Magazine. I also do a lot of styling for a, for most of the shoots um, that you've seen us have and uh, a lot of our covers. Um, there was a time where I was living in Atlanta, Georgia. So I lived in Atlanta, Georgia for five years. I moved back um, to my hometown of Cincinnati, Ohio because I got pregnant in the A. Okay, I became a mother in the A. And uh, I wanted to be closer to my family, especially when my child was so little. And then I had got an opportunity to come back home. And so I couldn't really pass it up. But I'm not gonna lie, um, Atlanta became my home because I lived there for five years. Even though I'm born and raised in Ohio, um, Atlanta became, became home for me and I miss it so much. So I'm sure that I'm gonna find myself um, back there in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, but when I'm home, I am the fashion show producer for the Cincinnati Music Festival, which is one of the biggest music festivals in the Midwest area. It started back in the 70s. And then as time went on, I'd say probably about 2017, they wanted to do something a little bit different and include fashion because we know, honey, when it comes to music, we are all about fashion. Okay, like they go hand in hand. Okay, like you can't go to a concert or go to an event looking crazy. Like when we step out, we step out. And so they wanted to include um, a fashion segment for the Cincinnati Music Festival. So what we do is they got rid of the Sunday night and they added a Thursday. And on that Thursday, we include a fashion show. Um, I have different designers from within the city or within the uh, Midwest area. And then um, we've also opened it up so that people can actually be vendors, which that was something that they never did. And they allowed me to create that platform, which is so amazing for me because there's a lot of talent in my area and a lot of people just don't get the recognition that they need. Um, and so, yeah, and so that's what I do. Um, I also have over 15 years of experience when it comes to uh, visual and um, well retail and visual merchandising so I used to travel and open up stores all across the Midwest with H&M um, so you know how stores look extremely beautiful and they're like very set to the T the windows are perfect that's what I do okay I love it that was my that was my corporate job um, making sure the store just told a story um, just was amazing looked really 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 good um, and so yeah and so I do that now for smaller businesses. I teach people the importance of visual merchandising because a lot of people are opening up stores and they're not really understanding how their store should flow and uh, what ultimately will bring their customers back to them. So yeah, I would, I would definitely consider myself to be one of those type of women who wears a lot of hats, okay? And see, that's another thing about being a mother. I'm a single mother, so, you know, we do find ourselves feeling like we have to do so much but we'll get back on that we will get back on to that um but yes yeah, so I just really wanted to I really wanted to introduce myself so you guys uh, know who I am you will be seeing more of me I don't really show my face too much um around control I'm one of those type of people that when it's time to do a photo shoot I'm there I'm ready um I'm paying attention to detail because when those pictures come out you know I want to make sure that whoever our celebrity is or whoever the model is that we have on set that they are perfected and so I am one of those type of people that's literally standing there watching Okay, I'm watching. I'm making sure nothing is popping out. Nothing looks crazy. We got the right earrings, the right shoes. Um, you know, I must say Control Magazine has one of the best styling teams. Um, okay, I'm, I'm going to toot our own horn. We kill covers. We kill shoots. And that's because we all have um, an eye for detail and an eye for fashion. So um, with everything going on in the world, it just feels like we haven't even been able to really jump into being on set and doing what we do. And I so miss it. I can't wait till all this craziness is over so that we can get back to it and, you know, really show you guys some more of our covers, some more of our shoots, because that's what we do. So I want you guys just to hang in there. Um, Miss Ariel will be jumping on in about four minutes. So make sure you have your, your questions. Now I'm gonna just show y'all how serious I am about Moms Unscripted. Because even though right now it is Instagram Live, 
um, you will eventually, eventually be able to see this stream from Roku. So we are going to be streamed from Roku. I'm so excited. Um, come February the 24th, you guys will be able to catch us on Roku. And um, I actually will be doing these interviews in person because, first of all, I want you guys to always be able to see how fabulous the ladies look, how fabulous I look, and um, really get the emotion and um, really just see us in person. I think that that is really important and um, I think that will allow us to be a little bit more relatable um, because like I said I want mothers to really really understand that they're not alone okay and no question is ever um, a dumb question no feeling is ever a dumb feeling um, because like I said becoming a mother does not come with directions okay I can vividly remember that day when it was like, Miss Scales, you know, today's your last day leaving the hospital. And I'm like, okay, this is, this is cool. And uh, I literally remember like standing in the bathroom, taking a selfie with my baby, this little bitty baby, and just thinking, oh my God, this time has finally come. What am I gonna do? I'm so used to, well, probably too, I was so used to just being on the hustle and bustle, doing what I wanted to do, um, travel here, go there, hang out. And then now I got this little person who I love, but this is gonna be different. Like this is gonna be so different for me. And the one thing they did not do was, I mean, they sent me home with some extra pampers and some supplies, but they did not give me no, they didn't give me no instructions. They didn't give me no no type of directions to take care of this little baby. So I was just like, okay, I'm going to figure this out. Um, although I am the oldest of six children, it's still a lot different when you are actually becoming somebody else's mother. Because now that means that at the end of babysitting, uh, you don't, you know, usually when you're babysitting or you watch somebody else's child, you get to leave. In this case... This child's got to be with me all the time. And I don't, a lot of you guys may not know, but if you Google me, any any article you've ever read about me, um, anytime I've been on the news for some of the things that I've done in my hometown, my child is literally with me on my hip. On my hip. I mean, seriously, like, Google me. Google Shadell Scales, mother, however you want to do it. And you're going to see Harlem on my hip. It's crazy. But okay, so it's almost 6 o'clock. I want you guys to know how serious I am about this show. I even had my cards uh, printed out. It says Mom's Unscripted because I'm on my Wendy Williams. And so, um, yes, okay, so let's see. Right, plan body, no instructions at all. We don't get any, any instructions. So let's see if Miss Ariel is on here. I'm so excited. Let's see, um, give me a second. Hold on guys, hold on. Okay, hold on. Let's see if Miss Ariel is on. Hey! Hi. Can you see me? Yes, I can, can you see me? Can you hear me? Yes, I can, you look beautiful. Thank you, so do you. Hold on, guys. It's like a little lag. Thank you, girl. So let's see what's going on. Is it? Okay. Hold on. Let, guys, let me make sure that my, um, that my Wi-Fi is on. Hey, queen. Hey, girl. Is that better? Yes, that's better. Is that better? Okay. First of all, do you got your cocktail, honey? Listen, so I couldn't join y'all with the wine because I'm feeling a little under the weather. So I got my tea. Okay, that's good. As long <laughs> as got your tea. Okay. As long as you got your tea, that's fine. That's fine. Okay, so um, before you jumped on, I was just pretty much just really giving an intro about myself and what I do and who I am. Um. And then I was just really explaining to everybody the whole purpose of Moms Unscripted. You know, um, as a mother, I always tell people, you know, the one thing is that when we have our babies, when we have our children, when we leave the hospital, we don't, we don't leave with any um, instructions, right? So we're really having to figure yeah. this out 
as we go okay so i mean any parent as a whole but mothers we don't we don't get any instructions it's just like okay today's your last day at the hospital we'll see you it is. <laughs> we'll see you when we see you we'll see you at a doctor's appointment or you know what i'm saying so um i have my cards so um i want this to be a very transparent conversation um, as you know, it's unscripted, so Miss Ariel has no idea of any of the things that I will be asking her. Um, but more importantly, I just want you to speak your truth. Um, you know, today we will be talking about um, balance. And so, um, because I think that word right now is really being pushed and shoved down women's throat, like balance, balance, balance. <laughs> um, and ultimately, I think at the end of the day, it's really hard for somebody to... Uh, really say that they have it all figured out because everybody's journey is different, right? Um, so I'm going to give you the floor and allow you to introduce yourself to everybody and we'll go from there. <laughs> <laughs> no, just kidding. <laughs> so my name is Ariel, also known as Ariel versus Cupcake. I am a social media manager and also now a new life coach. Hey. But I, um, right, thank you. But I narrowed it down to a, um, mindset and self accountability coaches because life coach is so broad and I do help a lot with elevating your mindset. So I um decided to just title it that. Um okay. but I've been I was a makeup artist for six, seven years. I worked wow. at Mac Cosmetics and then um I just started posting like pictures and stuff on Instagram and people were like, Oh my God, how did who did your hair? Who did your makeup? Who did this? Who did that? Right. So it kinda created a buzz. I had no idea that that existed on social media, right. um, which caused me to become a celebrity makeup artist. There we go. So I was doing celebrity uh, makeup for a few years, and then I decided, I don't think I want to do this no more. I don't think makeup is my passion. So I just became a digital creator full time. Okay. So let me yeah. ask you this. So you have so many women out there who they really do want to be a makeup artist. That's kind of like one of the main careers that women want to have. What was it? that made you feel like or when did you realize like this was not my passion i think this um working for mac it kind of burned me out because okay. you you're doing makeup all day for like 15 dollars an hour okay you know they're walking away with everything so it was just kind of like mm, i did it for so long it's just like okay what's next right right so when you yeah. were working so i think i just kind of outgrew it yeah did they not were they not able to give you something a little bit because I feel like when I worked in retail, I was really good at what I was doing. Um, and I was allowed to, you know, kind of do certain things here and there. Um, I did eventually get like a corporate position. But when you do makeup and you're working for somebody like Mac, you know, what's next? Do they allow anything after that? Or is it just do this makeup and that's it? Yes. Yeah, so they have like a certification process, but I had gotten, I received all my certifications. So then okay. it was really kind of like, what's next? And they didn't want me to relocate to Nashville, okay. but they weren't paying for any of anything. They of just wanted course. me to move. I'm not moving. <laughs> right. Of course. When now, you know, you can do makeup on your own, honey, and charge anywhere between 75 yeah. to 200 a face. Yeah. And see, different. that's what I was doing. I was doing that. But I think just being like on call, like, Okay. Having to just be on call for everybody, that's just where I'm like, okay. Yeah. That just went. Because I like to kind of just do my own thing. Like, that's just, <laughs> I don't know I why know. I'm like that. I like to just do my own thing okay. when I want to do it. Okay. So, so, since we're talking about makeup, I have to ask you would you consider yourself to be a natural girl or a beat? Or you got to be like beat to the gods? Which, which one is for you on the personal See, side? I'm more natural, but when I first got into it, Blue lipstick, blue okay. eyeshadow, all up here. I'm, I was crazy with it. But now, it's just like, I guess the older that I get, the more toned down I am. And it's just yeah. quick 15-minute face, and I'm ready to go. Yeah. I think maybe I'm just a little lazy. Oh, well, you're being honest. To... <laughs> <laughs> At least you're being honest. Okay, so now that you're no longer doing makeup, <clears throat> and we know that that's not your passion, um, tell us a little bit more. So you said that you were just kind of like, putting your pictures out there of your own makeup and your hair and then you kind of went in another direction tell me a little bit more about that so I was well I still am natural but um I want to say back in like 2013 maybe okay. um I was working at this um apartment complex as a leasing manager a leasing agent okay and I would just go to work and just sit at my desk and post pictures like my tweaked out my little makeup and stuff 
And um, people were just interested. Like, pages were reposting and stuff. And so my following started growing. And then people started requesting tutorials. And I'm like, I do not know what I'm doing. Right. <laughs> I figured it out. And um, I created a, a community, like a, a beautiful, amazing, engaging community. Yeah. And I'm just forever grateful for it. Okay. Through social media. Yeah. Like, amazing. Yeah. Okay, so I have to circle back. So when I'm usually doing like consultations with women and they're like opening up their store, right? Um, one of the things they always say is nobody supports me, right? Nobody's shopping with me. And I always tell them, well, the reason why they're not shopping with you or supporting you, as you say, is because you don't know who you're targeting. You don't know who your audience is. You don't know who your community is, like you said. So at what point did you realize who your community was and, and like what did you what do you feel like you were doing to attract them? So honestly, just being like 100% real, I wasn't really trying to target anybody. I was just trying to post pictures and that's just that. But once I realized like, hmm, women who are like me, like moms, are women who are aspiring makeup artists, are women who want to just live freely and do what they love for a living. They were like looking up to me, reaching out to me. So I'm like, okay, this is who I'm talking to. This is who I need to continue uh, talking to. But now it's kind of hard because a lot of women that follow me, they want hair and makeup. And it's like now that, you know, I'll be 30 in two months. Oh, I'll be 30 May. I'll be 30 in March. Oh, okay. It's still January. So it's still Girl! Uh, <laughs> What's wrong but with I think, I'll, be, I'll be 39 next month. So what's wrong with 30? Listen, I'm excited. I'm excited to be 30. They say that's when your life really starts. So what I'm saying is I'm like, I don't want to be like makeup and hair, you know? Yeah. I want to do like the big girl stuff, you yeah. know, not to say makeup and hair, not big girl stuff, but I want to yeah. do like, just, oh my God, I just want to do it all. Like, okay. I'm just ready to just step out of that box because I feel like um, when I did start, you know, social media and stuff and I was just posting my hair and makeup, kind of put me in a box. And now yeah. when they see me, they're like, oh, that's a girl that does hair and makeup. And it's like, now I'm like, no, I don't really do that no more. Yeah. Like, that's yeah. not who I am. So now I'm working on getting out of that box. Well, I'm kind of almost out of it, but now my focus is getting out of that hair and makeup beauty box okay. and jumping more into like the lifestyle coaching yep. um, field. Okay. So because I already know this about you and I said this to you for our conversation, you know, as Pisces, mm-hmm. we are nurturers. So yes. I know it's like, it's a gift. Yeah, it is. It is a gift. And it's a curse sometimes. So mm-hmm, definitely. I'm just wondering at what point did you feel like you wanted to do coaching? Because it I mean, it, it is it is a great thing to do, but it can be pretty stressful because you are kind of taking on other people's issues and problems and really happen to circle back around and give them solutions and answers to what they're going through. So what made you decide that you wanted to step into the coaching field? So honestly, it's just something that I've naturally been doing my whole life. I just recently, maybe like two years ago, realized that there's actually a field for what I've been doing. Okay. Um, like my family, friends, they all come to me for advice, and I'm the one uplifting everybody and just making sure everybody's on track and, you know, keeping that mental right. So it's just something that I've been doing, you know, naturally, not even knowing that it's something that I've been doing. So I'm like, I've been doing this. Yeah. Let's just go ahead and make it official. Yeah. Okay, so coaching, how do you balance all of that? I mean, because you're a mom, and now you're taking on coaching, which means you're taking on a bunch of personalities and Mm -hmm. problems, trying to provide solutions. Um, I don't know. Are you a single mom? Are Are you with somebody? So I am, so let me see, how can I tell you this? I am a, a mom who is single, but my son's dad is very active in his life. Okay, absolutely. Okay, so you're not having to necessarily balance that part by yourself. Um, but yes, you are just having to, you happen to balance just your livelihood and still just being a full-time mommy. So, I mean, how do you define balance? Would you consider, are you balanced right now? Absolutely not. I've been January. <laughs> <laughs> January, I was like, you know what? I'm gonna create some structure. So I've been getting up between five and seven a.m. just to create that okay. balance and that structure. Because now with COVID going on, the kids are doing online school. Okay. So on top of me having to do my work and 
you know, the stuff that I have to do because I still am digital. I'm creating for like brands and stuff too on top of coaching. Okay. Um, and I'm also managing other people's social media pages. So I'm doing that also. Um, but really, I honestly cannot tell you. I just, I'm like, you know what? This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to get up. And I'm going to do this at this time. I know my son has to be on school at 10. So I try to get everything that I can finished before 10. But it's really just having discipline. Yep. Um, yeah. Because a lot of times I'll be so motivated to do so much. But it's like you can be motivated all day. But if you don't have that discipline, that motivation goes out the door. So really just being disciplined. That's how you create that balance. But I'm still working on it. No. This is my first month <laughs> trying to get some structure. No. Because I'm just a go with a go with the flow type person. Like I'm just like, okay, this is what we're doing yeah. today. I'm going with it. Yeah. But now I've been trying to plan because when you plan, you are you're able to execute what it is you want yeah. better. Yeah. So what so what does planning look like for you? Are you are you taking like a Sunday and saying, I'm planning out the week? Are you planning out are you planning out your whole month? Are you doing about a quarter? What's working the best? So I'm doing it daily. So I do it daily. Um, okay. I'll get up in the morning. So the night before, I'll write in my, um, I'll try to plan my day out for the next day. Okay. And then I get up in the morning and look at my journal and see what it is I got to do and knock it out. So I plan the night before. I want to weekly plan, but the way that my life is set up, it's like, <laughs> can't plan for the week. I mean, yes, because you just basically told me that not only are you becoming a coach, we know you're a mom, um, you are bringing value to other people's brands you are doing social media i mean that's a lot but i know you can handle it yes um, i am okay. Thank you guys. okay okay I, I gotta know though what what is like when do you take time for yourself what like what is self-care you know, all like the time <laughs> all the time that's the problem okay <laughs> the okay problem. um like you today, you know, and I and I love having that freedom. Said, Law, me and discipline are in constant battle. Discipline is, it is hard. It is hard, but I I will say that when you do some discipline, things do work out a lot better for you. I will have to say that. That's crazy. Okay. Yeah, and it is, and it is tough. You have to, uh, you just have to have that discipline, whatever discipline looks like for you. So if you want to, you know, just create a goal. I was on Clubhouse, and there was someone, a therapist, and she really said something that stuck out to me in December okay. and I've been using it in January but she said to become disciplined you want to get up and do something that you're normally going to do you know get up make it right up go brush your teeth and then after you do like two three things that you normally do yeah she said you want to re reward yourself because just like a, just like a dog or a kid you know you a kid does something like yeah yeah you reward them so it's the same thing with us we still have that inner child yeah um and we want to be happy and be praised for stuff yeah. that we accomplish and do. So we have to reward ourselves after, like, the first two, three tasks. And then you feel good. So I've been rewarding myself. Okay. Uh, I <laughs> do the, reward it's just me sitting down for 15 minutes. If it's just me sitting down for 15 minutes, drinking some wine, watching a YouTube video that I wanted to catch up on. Okay. Or if it's me um, sitting and uh, texting or talking on the phone, FaceTime, and, like, stuff that I would normally do. Okay. Um, but since I'm on this discipline role, I'm like cutting it out until I get everything that I need to get done for the day or the moment finished. Okay. Okay. So I, I, I have to ask you this question. I want you to be very honest to some of the other moms out there. Um, I feel like every time we go on social media, right? Um, and I always tell people, don't get so caught up in social media because in reality, people only show you what they want you to see, right? So people don't always necessarily come on there and be like, I'm having a bad day. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, this is what happened. Like right now I'm in the process of potty training. So it's not always the best for me, but it's something that I know that I have to do. Um, but do I always come on social media and tell you when I'm having those type of moments? No. But I am kind of noticing that a lot of women, mothers, they are comparing their journey to women that they see on social media. And it's kind of like deterring them in their own personal journey as if it's as if they're mm -hmm. doing something wrong. So my question is, what advice would you give to mothers or women in general who find themselves always on social media scrolling to see what this celebrity is doing and then comparing it to your life? You get what I'm saying? 
Yes. Yeah, so see, I had that um, issue in the beginning, like when I first started, like, okay. I want to say maybe like not even first started in STEM. This is probably like 2017, 2018. Okay. Um, I had started following a lot of moms and I would see, you know, they're cooking every day. Yep. Um, they're going to the park with their kids, reading books every night and doing this stuff like this. And I'm like, here I am making a peanut butter and jelly sandwich because <laughs> I just got off work. Uh, so I'm like, uh, okay. Um, but I just think that just removing that, like trying to be perfect because they, like you said, they're only showing the good stuff. So the good they might be showing you that Monday. Yeah, they might be showing you that Monday or Tuesday where they're making pasta and, yeah. you know, spaghetti and stuff. But then Wednesday, Thursday, they eat Chick-fil-A and uh, yeah. peanut butter and jelly sandwich. So, you know, they're not going to show you that. So I think just taking that need mm -hmm. to be perfect or comparing yourself to others, you just have to yeah. take that out. And it is tough because scrolling on social media, Social media can do that to you. It can yeah. make you feel like, oh, I'm not doing nothing. Or everybody's doing this. Or I'm just a failure, this and that. But you really have to. It's, yeah. What I did, too, and this might sound crazy, but I've been unfollowing people. I've unfollowed a lot of people who make me feel like. We well, don't talk about that. It's like oh. when I. Yeah, when I look at them and I see, you know, and it just, it's just like the energy you get because yeah. a lot of people on social media, and this is what I've been getting sick of with social media, because I was going to take a little break, but I was okay. like, you know what, I ain't going to do it. Okay. I got to have that control. But social media has been really making me so upset because a lot of people on social media, they'll show you what they got, but not how they got it. Yep. And it's like, okay, I'm tired of seeing your Louis bag and all yeah. this stuff, and you ain't going to tell me how you got it, like flossing yeah. on me. So I think a lot of people use social media just for that validation, but yeah. we can't do that. We got to get out. And the real is coming back, you know? And I feel like if we are all real and transparent, it just helps all of us out because you never know what somebody, you never know that somebody might be going through the same thing that you yep. are experiencing. Yep. You know? Absolutely. It's just about being honest and real and transparent about it. Absolutely. So you said you started unfollowing people. So maybe about, and I think I had told you this maybe about a week or two ago, Instagram blocked me on my page. Yeah, you tell me that. <laughs> you tell me because you went on an unfollowing spree. <laughs> because I went on an unfollowing spree on my page. And I'm going to tell you why, you and everybody else who's watching, why I went on an unfollowing spree. So I don't even remember right now when Instagram started. But I was on Instagram when it first started, right? Mm -hmm. Who I was as a woman then is not who I am now. Yes, so certain people that, you know, I wanted to be in tune with what they had going on. It could be from my city or, or just in general. Like, to be honest, like, that's not where I'm at now. Like, when I first got mm -hmm. on social media, I wasn't a mother. You get what I'm saying? Like, I didn't have as many yeah. responsibilities. I didn't, um, I didn't care about certain things. It was just like, oh, okay, I know her. Okay, I'm going to follow her. Oh, he handsome. Same. I'm going to follow him. But now I'm just in like such a different space in my life that I just I just don't have a desire to follow certain people. And so I went on an unfollowing spree at about one o'clock um, in the morning and they blocked me, basically saying that it looked as if somebody uh, I had paid to, to follow people. And I only have like six. 6,000 something followers. So you think I'm going to pay somebody yeah. for 6,000 followers? They probably thought you were a bot. Exactly. So yes, I was I was blocked on my own page for about two weeks. I thought it was the most funniest thing. But to be honest, I took that time to really take a break from myself. It's, it's weird how the universe works um, because I probably wouldn't have just done it on my own. And so the universe was like, listen here, bitch. You need a break. You need some time. Yes. I'm going to give it to you. So it's just funny that you you do say that, and I and I see a lot of people doing it. I think I got that from you though. Now that I think about it, what I think you put that I think you put that in my head when we talked, and you were like, "I've been unfollowing people, and if I don't write you back, I got blocked because I was unfollowing people." And I'm like, "That's a good idea." Yeah, because like you said, you are we are not who we were back in 2012, 2013, 2011. Stuff changes, and we are grown. We elevate. We grow, honey, and, I, and like I told you a little earlier, like next month. Team Pisces, I'll be 39. I still can't believe I'm saying that, but I'll be 39, so I'm definitely not that girl that I was when I first mm -hmm. logged on to Instagram. You know, my interests are totally different. Um, my energy is different. I want to attract like-minded women and just people as a yeah. whole, so yes, I did go on an unfollowing spree. So, yeah, okay. that's good, though. So let and me I'm with you on attracting like-minded individuals. Yes. Like, that is all I keep on putting out there. I'm like, please, just bring them to me. Yes. Please. I don't care what anybody says. Like, it's very, it's 
very, very important. You know, it just just to have. Yeah, they say you are the five people that you are around. No, really, that's true. And I believe that. Yes. No, that is just like so true. So I have to ask, um, with everything that you really just have going on, um, especially with you now being a life coach, um, what advice would you give? to other mothers that are trying to step into the entrepreneurial world and maybe feel like it's overwhelming? Like, what would you suggest to them? So the number one thing that I would suggest is to figure out your why. Yeah. Um, when you know what your why is, and I learned this too from, uh, forget who said, I think his name is Mr. Andy, but he okay. said, when people know your why, they'll buy, they'll buy or support your what. Yeah. So as long as you know your why, like why are you doing what you're doing, mm -hmm. Everything else just comes. And that is so true because when you're just doing stuff just to be doing it yeah. or doing stuff for the money and you have no idea why you're doing it, you're just doing it because, oh, this is, is going to make me rich. Oh, I, I want to be an entrepreneur. This is what I'm going to do. Yeah. It, it, nine times out of ten, it doesn't work. But when you know your why behind what you're doing. Yeah. I know. It's just like, it just like it Yes. It, it I, does. I think at the end of the day, if you think about people that you follow on social media and you think to yourself, why? am I following her? Why am I following him? Then in turn, you can use that same thing about yourself to figure out why somebody yeah. should be following you or interacting with you. I think it's the same thing. I, I don't even, sometimes things yeah. are a lot easier, but we overwhelm it. We complicate it. I know. It's, it's, what we, it's just what we were taught. Like, I know. We, I don't think, I don't think any, I don't think we were just taught to like, to just go for it. We were taught we had to go to college, you got to get a degree, you got to work in corporate, yes. you got to do this, save up this amount of money, do this, do this. Yep. And it's like, really? When you just put your, when you just put a thought in your head, like, this is what I'm going to do. Yeah. I'm going to do this. I mean, man, I can't tell you how much stuff that I've thought about. And now I'm like, oh my God, I can't believe it's here. Like, I really did that. Yeah. No. Now, would you say, I think with everything that's been going on in the world, <laughs> I, and I don't want to say, I don't want to think anything less of it because it, it has been crazy. It has been a lot of people who have been getting sick. But with, with the pandemic that we've been experiencing, I don't know. I felt like it really did something kind of amazing for me. Like, I, it kind of, like, really pushed me and motivated me to get my shit mm -hmm. together, um, to realize mm -hmm. that uh, any and everything that you don't expect can happen can happen. Um, yeah. And to really just believe in myself and that I'm a lot stronger than what I acknowledge. You know, I feel like I know that the pandemic is a is a horrific thing, but I really feel like it strengthened a lot of people. What do you What do you think? Yeah. Oh my gosh, I totally agree. I feel like at the beginning of the year last year, mm -hmm. it's a little story. Uh, 2019, I was like, 2020 is my year. I'm going. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. I'm acting the fool. So 2020, I was gonna be acting the fool. Okay. Uh, in January, I was acting the fool. I was. I'm talking about everywhere. New York, yeah. um, L.A., Miami, just everywhere. Yep. And then the pandemic hit, and it was like, girl, you need to sit down somewhere. You yep. need to figure out what it is you're really doing because I was just so caught up on the image of things. You know, like okay. trying to keep that image up that I have of like. Being here at this, like being like, oh, they people know me, like, oh, she travels, she do this, she's yes. always this, she's always that. So I was so focused on like 2020, I'm amping it up a notch, and yes. I'm really gonna show them like this is what it is. But mm -mm. yeah, I had to sit down, and I'm so glad I said I did because when I was forced to sit down, it was kind of like, well, what are you doing this for? Like, who are you trying to impress? Yeah, you know. Yeah. And once I really sat down and thought about that, it was like, okay, we got to get some stuff together, and then like. The brand partnerships start. Um, they started like pulling out because it was just so much going on, you know, with uh, the protest and all that stuff. Yeah. So it was just a lot, and it was like me, like, okay, you gotta, you gotta figure it out because really, like you said, anything can happen at any time. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, yeah, like I mean, when when all this hit, to be honest, like I wasn't afraid of like getting sick. I know that might seem crazy, but I like I wasn't afraid of getting sick. But I'll tell you what I was more afraid of. I was more afraid of other people um, being so um, afraid and so unaware and not doing their own research. Mm -hmm. And then in turn, maybe looking at me or, you know, anybody that I surround myself with because we didn't necessarily think or, or share that same fear. So I think that right there was just kind of like 
my stressor like whoa like because i'm a heavy researcher so if something doesn't make me too me, i'm gonna find it out i'm not gonna just go with me the too flow. like girl okay i'll be in here like Okay. Me too. <laughs> okay. Let me grab this book. Let me go to the library. Let me get. That has always too. been me. Like I never just go with the flow of what somebody says because they said it. Like, and I don't think you should. Yes, yeah. you should not. Because I saw too. This is totally off topic, but I uh, was watching something on Instagram, and it was like a a video came where I think Dr. Fossey was talking about. Uh, yeah, you the the vaccine one hundred percent doesn't prevent you from getting the virus, and I'm like. Hey, of course I'm researching, trying to figure yeah. out what the heck is going on. Yeah, but it's it's just a lot, and I feel like we do need to research because there's a lot of stuff that they're telling us that's not necessarily true. Yeah, and um, they just want to put fear in us. Fear. But, so yeah. you're a vegan, right? Mm -hmm. Is your child a vegan? No, he's like half and half. When he's with me, he is, but when he's with his dad, he's not. Okay, so tell me about that because I'm not a vegan. Um, like I don't, I don't eat any. But your daughter is. My daughter is so like okay. my struggle is, and I don't call it a struggle. But my thing, I still eat cheese and I still eat seafood. I don't eat like red meat or pork. Um, but my daughter is a vegan because my sister is a vegan, right? And so um, she's Miss Plant Body, honey. So she really motivated me and pushed me to, you know, really install that in my daughter. And the older that my daughter is getting, I'm now realizing that um, even though I may not want to be a vegan, I do now have to make more of those choices and those selections because it's going to be a tad bit confusing to her to be like, yo, you eat cheese, what do you eat? but uh -huh. I can't eat cheese. So now I'm trying to eat more like non-dairy cheese, right? So what have been some challenges for you? Because like you said, you're a vegan. Your son is a, is has a vegan diet when he's with you, but when he's with his dad, like, tell me about that. Girl, you make me want to crack him upside the head. Um, <laughs> we'll all make something, and he's like, he's like, I don't want these vegan chicken nuggets. I want Chick Fil A, and I'm like, well, you not eat Chick Fil A with me? Yeah, you got nothing to do with Yeah. So um, it's just figuring out. I really have to figure out what he likes. Like some stuff he does like. He likes the vegan cheese and like the vegan burgers, okay, pastas and. He does, like, some of the vegan, like, chicken nuggets and stuff. It was just, like, trial and error, like, seeing what he did like and what yeah. he didn't like. So now he's cool. Sometimes I still want to knock him a sack head. Yeah. Cause he, he's like, I don't like this. But, yeah. Yeah, uh, you sound, you sound it, like it was a true challenge. Yeah. Yeah. So let me ask you this. So when he gets a little bit older, how old is your son now? He's eight. Eight. Okay. So when he gets about 18, and he's like, yo, mom, I'm not even trying to do that no more. Like, I just want to eat the way I want to eat. How is that going to make you feel? I'm here, then. I'm just going to be like, whatever. I'm not doing it. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> so that's, okay. You know, it's still like now I tell him, I'm like, if you want to eat that, you know, I try to educate him a little bit on it. But he's eight. He don't care. He's yeah. like, it's good. I want to eat it. So I don't really um, deprive him of stuff that he wants to eat. Like, for an hour, and he wants some ice cream or something. As much as it hurts my soul, I know. I give it to him. Okay. I still give it to him. Okay. Yeah. You're going to have to get him the avocado ice cream, honey. That's what my daughter... Uh... Girl, he was screaming. <laughs> like, what is this? What is this? Yeah. Girl, I can only imagine. So, my daughter is two, guys. She's a vegan. Um, it's a That's lot amazing. easier. Yeah, it's a lot easier for me because she doesn't know anything else but what she's been given now. Um, I used to breastfeed her, of course. Um... <laughs> I just stopped doing that probably like the middle, well, almost like the end of last year. That was a struggle. Um, I still have mm. moments where she thinks she's supposed to stick her hand down my shirt. Uh, <laughs> That's what they do. <laughs> girl, I'm like, yo, big old butt. And so she drinks, um, when she wants some milk, when she wants some cereal, she does coconut milk. She loves, she loves coconut mm. milk. Um, but for the most part, my daughter loves beans, garbanzo beans. Uh, Damn, I said hate beans. Girl, my, that's all my baby wants is beans. <laughs> she likes cucumbers. So it's a lot easier for me now because she's two. And that's so amazing. this is all that she knows. Um, she doesn't know anything else. And so, um, but I, I can definitely understand that it is a challenge because my sister has two two boys and they, they were not originally raised on a vegan diet. And so 
you know, she definitely yeah. expresses to them the importance and different things. But of course, you know, they turn their nose up every blue moon because it's it's different for them. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So um, I get it. We got some questions on here. Let me see. I can't even see any of the questions. It's you like can't see the questions? Okay. No, let me try this. Okay. Let's see what we got. Wait a minute. She left us, guys. Let me get her back. Hold on. Hold on. Let me get her back. Hold on. There she go. Okay. You there? Okay. Okay. Yeah. So let, let me take a look. Let me see here. Okay, let's see. Okay, so T Money said that she definitely resonates with so so many of this stuff. Well, that's a good thing. I want you guys to definitely ask any questions. Uh, any questions you have for Ariel? Any yes, questions? Yes, please. Please ask them. Um, yes, don't give into fear. Absolutely. So I feel like that is one of the things about uh, the pandemic right now is that they want people to be afraid. They want you to be to be in fear. And if you are in fear, then, mm -hmm. you know, you, you literally is telling yourself that you won't take the time to do any research or to learn anything. So you're right. You cannot, you cannot give into fear guys. Absolutely. Um, the same way that you go to the shade room or you go to Google and you go to this to figure out something, it's the same thing. Like just research, take the, the extra time to do some research for yourself. Um, anybody else? Plant body set is the education part. Absolutely. You do. You do have to educate yourself. I know sometimes we live in this world where, uh, you know, people don't really want to take that time to, to do some work. But guys, like you have to, especially as moms, um, it's a lot of stress on women, black women. Um, you know, we, oh we play a, a huge role. So we have to do the research and we have to educate not only uh, for ourselves, but for our children. Um well, she said, oh, not the avocado ice cream. She said he was <laughs> He will. I can see him now. What is this? <laughs> oh, my God. My daughter loves it. We There's a store here in my city called Jungle Gems. It's amazing. It has, like, it's one of the biggest grocery stores ever, and it has, like, a selection of everything, okay? So, so is it green? Um, No, it's like a, it, it's, it's like a, it's like avocado and, and mint, and it does have, like, a, it's like a light tan color, but it's not green, though. Oh, okay, maybe he might try it then, because if it's green, it's probably going to look bad. So they, I mean, they have all kinds. They have all kinds of flavors. Um, I just can't think See, of See, we eat, green. like, um, almond milk ice cream and stuff yeah. like that, but, of course, when you're out, they don't have it, but he's always like, I'm going to go to this ice cream store in the summertime. Yeah. I'm going to put my foot down now. Now I'm putting my foot down. Now that I think about it, we no more ice cream. Got to put your foot down. <laughs> Okay, so I have to ask you. So you you're 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 from a small city like me. Yep. So has there ever been a time where you had like <laughs> small city blues or felt like you couldn't like really be at your best potential because of where you live? Has that ever stopped you? Oh my goodness. Um I wouldn't say it stopped me, but it has like put some thoughts into my head like Okay. No, no. Who do you think you are coming from okay. this little small city trying to do something? But okay. um, it's just like knowing it's actually like a push now, like knowing where I come from and, you know, being from the hood and, you know, there would be days where we didn't have water, lights and stuff like that. And just yep. coming oh, from that let environment. Let me sit, let me sit real Not here. Hold up. <laughs> okay. Okay. Go ahead. Okay, girl. Speak it. <laughs> okay. So yeah, just like living living that life and then getting older and seeing life. Hold on, wait, there's a little bit more out here, you know? Yeah. But I think um if I didn't I didn't get on the, my first plane until I was eighteen, eighteen, nineteen, I believe. Okay. And when I went <clears throat> out of town for the first time it was like what the heck is going on? Yeah. So it was just like an eye opener, like Yeah. Okay, there's so much more than the city that I'm from. So yep. once I was able to see, which I always knew, you know how you're a kid and you see people on TV and stuff. You're like, oh, I want to do that. I want to do that. And it's just stuff on TV. Like, I never got to see anyone from my city or anything doing the stuff, like, 
that I wanted to do. So it was like, sometimes it was a challenge to be like, okay, nobody else is doing this. How are you going to do this? You know, and you've never seen this. So what are you going to do to achieve this if you don't even know how to do it? You know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, So just knowing that we are not our environment, you know, we can be from the hood, we can grow up from the struggle and stuff, but that's just what makes us who we are now. And yeah. it is motivation for me to continue to keep going and let other um, young women or even young men know, like, just yeah. because you grew up this way don't mean you have to stay this way. And yeah. it's just all a mindset change. You have to really change your mindset because we grow up and we are conditioned and taught to think certain stuff. And it's really not even our parents' fault because they don't know any better. You it's just like an ongoing thing. Yeah. So it's up to us yeah. To break that chain, like, okay, enough's enough. You can do whatever you want to do. You don't have to do this to do that. Uh, yeah. You know, just, it's really just getting out of those unlearned conditions and behaviors and that, that mindset that we um, developed growing up. Yeah, that's very true. Um, <clears throat> I had to take my sip, but I, I, I definitely had, <laughs> goodness gracious, I definitely had situations like that myself growing up. Um, you know, my mother, she, you know, had certain situations. And so, um, you know, we definitely had some really tough times uh, growing up. And so, but I always just, I've always just been one of those type of people that thought very high, like, well, it doesn't matter. I don't, I don't care if we're homeless right now because I got this outfit and I'm still going to be bombing too. <laughs> like, I just always been that girl. So like, um, you know, I can recall being in high school, I had said this on Facebook like a couple years ago, but like, um, like my 12th grade year, I had two pairs of jeans. I had two pairs of jeans my 12th grade year, and I don't know how the hell I worked it, but my friends never knew that I that I was struggling through high school. Like they never knew any of my, um, they never knew any of my real struggle. Um, and so I'm saying that to say that you know, being from a small city, um, having certain struggles. But I, but my grandmother always spoke a lot of life into me. She always just told me that I would do um, amazing things. And so I always believed that, um, which is one of the reasons why I moved to Atlanta, Georgia, like I did. You know, I wanted to mm. be a celebrity stylist. I accomplished that. I wanted to work for a magazine. I do that. I wanted to be published. I did that. Um, I have my own clothing brand. I've done that. You know, so... Um, yes. But then when I moved back to Cincinnati, I can honestly say I started to have imposter syndrome. Um, I started, and, and, I, and I do struggle with this even now, I feel like um, having certain conversations and just speaking about the things that I have accomplished can sometimes comes off as if I'm bragging. But that's yes. because... Um, a lot of people that I may not know, it's not that they're doing anything wrong, but maybe they just haven't accomplished certain things themselves. Yeah, and sometimes they're just in another, like, yeah, they have a different mindset, you know, like Absolutely. they're not, they ain't trying to achieve the stuff that we are. They are comfortable working, you know, nine to five and, right. you know, doing the daily things, which is fine. That's fine. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. But it is hard to communicate um, with people like in your town and stuff who it don't is. have the same visions and goals as you. So I totally it get is. where you're coming from. It is. Um, and uh, But, you know, that's why anytime I do get an opportunity or a platform, like I thoroughly, thoroughly try to pull anybody I can up on the platform with me because opportunities yep. do come my way. You know what I'm saying? Yep. And so... Um, you know, but I, I do want women to know that regardless of where you're from, regardless of the city that you live in, everything is really here. And if you plan, yes. like you said, and if you are um, determined and you are disciplined, if you make a plan, you can make it happen. Even if you have to do things outside of your city, you know, just finding those right people. Um, it is definitely something that you can do. So that's why I was just wondering, like, with you being from a small city, how does that make you feel? So I'm glad that yeah, you Yeah, it did kind of, like, put me in a box. I will say yeah. that I was in a box at first because I was just doing what I what I knew, you know? Yeah. Doing what was a, what, what was around me. Yeah. yeah. And then when you do, like, you know, you are dressed up. And, you know, once I did move back, because uh, I moved to New York, and when I did come back, you know, I had a different little style about myself. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, I would want to be cute and stuff, and then you got yeah. people looking at you like, yeah, like girl, because they're not used to seeing that. Yeah, you yeah. know, they're not used to seeing that. And I'm like, I'm not going nowhere. I'm just 
Yeah. What I want to be cute for the day. Yeah. But um, once she get over that, uh, it's just like, it is what it is, but it is easy to get stuck in that box when you do come it from is. a small city. It is. Yeah. It is. I, you know, it is. Um, the owner of the magazine, when he knew that I was moving back to Cincinnati, he was like, don't you do it. Don't you go back <laughs> and forget who you are. Don't forget yes. what you accomplished. Don't forget your power. And I'm like, no, nah, I ain't going to do that. Went back from like, stop wearing my big earrings and my cute clothes. Because you get my comfortable. Hat, my sweatsuits. And yes. I just like, eh, it is what it is. Yep. But you know, I, I I love just being me. You know, I, I, I love my big glasses. I love my big earrings. I, you know, and but like you said, when you, when you are around certain different people and you do live a different type of lifestyle and you kind of come back to your city and that's not necessarily the norm, you will kind of get those looks. Uh, I guess yeah. for me, I'm just like, mm, well, it is what it is. That's just me. Me too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> me too now. At first I was like, oh God, no, I don't want people looking at me like I think I'm all that I some Like that really, that that's really cool. used to bother me. I didn't, yeah. I, I'm like, you know, when people will be like, oh, she's stuck up and this and that. I'm like, yeah. Far from that, yeah. like, I'm the most outgoing, nice, sweet yeah. person you ever meet. But it was just an image that they saw that they was like, yeah. And then when yeah. when they when I open my mouth, they like, oh, she's so nice. I'm like, yeah, yeah. trying to yeah. judge me by my look. Yeah, yeah. So with that, being but it's said, easy to was, do that. If, if I was to ask your best friend three adjectives to describe you, since you said you talked about image, what what do you think she would tell me? Um. Dang. I want to know. She's going to say, uh, I'm probably bossy. Really? Yeah, a are, little are, bit. Are, Just are um, But look, in a good way. You know how, like, um, what do they call it? Is it passive aggressiveness? I, I have that so bad, and I'm working on it. But uh, I'll be like, you know, like we're at the store or something, and we get food for the night, having yeah. a girls' night, and I'm like, She's like, oh, I want this salad. And I'm like, oh, I think we should get this salad. But we don't have to if you don't want to. Like, that's me. <laughs> that's my way of, like, trying to get, like, come on, get that salad. We don't got to do it, but I want that one. Yeah. <laughs> so I do that. Um, okay. Outgoing. I'm outgoing. I don't know. It's hard. Because I got a whole lot of stuff that I would say. But I don't know what she would say. She would just, she would probably cry if I made some on there. I don't okay. answer that question. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, okay. I'm just kidding. Um, yeah, she would say uh, I'm probably a little bossy, um, determined. I'm very determined, and I go for what I want. Okay. Um, and she would say that I am probably very motivating. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's honest. At least, see, see, you said something about yourself um, that most people probably wouldn't do, which is to acknowledge something that they probably need to work on. Because I think a lot of times, mm -hmm. women, we don't always want to admit certain things about, we're not perfect, but we don't want to admit to we being wrong. You know, <laughs> yeah. we, don't, we know we might have some damn issues, but we might not want to admit them. But I think that's very big of you um, to say that and to admit that. Because, mm -hmm. you know, honey, your best friend going to keep it so 100 about you. Your best friend, your sister, yes. whoever, they're going to they gonna, they gonna definitely tell, um, tell the truth about you. So, um, so with you now jumping into, you know, being a life coach, I mean, where do you want to see yourself within the next two years with this new endeavor that you're taking? Oh my gosh. So I've been trying to think about that. Um, but I honestly, I don't know. <laughs> I really just don't know. I do know that I, um, I want this, well, I don't want this to be, this is going to be, okay. um, this is going to be something that I'm doing for a while. I know that I do want to make this something like, I don't know, I, I want to go far with this, you know, and I want to bring other people on um, like a big community, like a big life coach community. That's okay. what I'm aiming for right now. Um, okay. I also have a vending machine company too. Okay, but, yes, uh, I wanted, I wanted to talk to you about, I was, that was next, but I was going to let you talk about what your, your new endeavor was. Yeah, so the vending machine company, uh, we just, it's just a regular vending machine with just regular snacks in it. But a lot of people think that it's cupcakes in there because it's called cupcake vending. Yeah. But my nickname is Cupcake. Okay. Um, 
So that's why I cut things in. But yeah, I have that. So I want to expand the locations. Just I, uh, I don't want to just be solely in Kentucky. I want to, you know, expand that. Okay. Um, as far as my coaching business, I do want to um, host group coaching. I'm working on that. Right now, I'm just doing one-on-one coaching, but I do eventually want to do group coaching okay. um, and host, like, webinars and stuff like that. So that's okay. something that I want to do um, down the road with this. Okay. So, um, it's a, uh, so during, during the pandemic, you know, I was like all up in my, oh shit, I got to figure out, I got to learn this, I got to learn that. So I like, the, I did like, I, honey, I took so many master classes and, and got so many ebooks. Me and one too. Of them was one, was, <laughs> okay. Cause I'm like, I got to be prepared. I don't know what's going on in the world. I got to, I got to Me know too. Like, so different things. So, oh my God. tell me how you got into the vending business. Like what, what drove you to do that? Man, literally, oh my goodness. So I have been talking about it for years, you know, okay. like, I want to get a vending machine, I want to get a vending machine. And then, you know, just put it off because you don't know how to start. Yeah. Well, I have a friend named Brienne, and last year she started her vending machine company, uh, I want to say like maybe January, February, Okay. Um, because she had lost her job. Okay. And so she, you know, wanted something that was going to be, so she wanted to create passive income and something that she didn't have to clock in for, you know? Yeah. So she started her vending machine company, and I didn't think nothing of it. I was like, yay, go get in. You know, so excited. And then one day, like, I was just like, I want to do it. And so I asked her, and she was like, okay, let me tell you everything you know. I literally got my business going up in five days, thanks to Brienne. Yeah. So was it hard <laughs> to find a vending machine? Were they expensive? Or oh, yeah. Okay. okay, so yeah, they are expensive, but they have – um finance options on some uh, sites. But I paid about, it, it just depends, you'll pay between three to $4,000 for your machine new, um, okay. but you can get used machines and stuff like on Facebook Marketplace and stuff like that, but yeah. Okay. So it was so easy, and she, she is hosting a, a webinar um, on February 27th. Okay, okay, cool. Yeah, well, she's I doing great. Like, I, would, like, I have the ebook, so I have some knowledge, but I would love to like really she I'm makes more, it so simple. Yeah. Like she makes it so simple. When she was when, like, when I had the consultation, I could not believe. I'm like, are you freaking kidding me? This is all yeah. I gotta do. Literally, just like five steps. Okay. She makes it so easy. She has like okay. a contract. She gives you the verbiage to uh, that you should be using to speak to like the owners of the place that you want to place your vending machine. She, okay. She's good. Yeah, okay. good. Well, I'm definitely interested, honey. So I will be checking in I'll, i'm sure you're gonna yeah. probably post it or at least give me yeah. uh, information let me see if we have any more questions on here because i know i don't want to take up any more of your time uh okay so somebody said um when you have ambitions people take it as you're spoiled because you're going after your dreams Woo! You want to talk about that? Ooh -wee. a lot of people think that i grew up with some spoon in my mouth but i'm like oh my gosh <laughs> My mom had me when she was 15. Okay. Uh, I'm the oldest of four girls. Uh, and my dad has my son, my brother and I, and he's okay. been in jail since I was like 13. He's still in jail. Okay. Um, so I'm like, me, school? Oh my gosh. But a lot of people do. They think I'm cool because I have like this drive and ambition. But I'm like, a lot of uh, the stuff that I've done is because of me. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Um, so that is that. I don't know why that is. That's wild that people think that though. Just yeah, because you are here moving and grooving, they think somebody gave it to you. Yeah. I don't think people realize the power that you have, and when you work in your power, you definitely can make things happen. And so people who yes. are on the outside thinking that you this and you that, that really has nothing to do with you. That's them just feeling a certain way about themselves and not believing in themselves. So and projecting that onto you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So I would say to anybody who feels like you spoiled or you this or you that, honey, don't take that personal. That's that's unfortunate. You are spoiled. You spoil yourself. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> that, but, you know, that's them feeling a way about themselves because they don't have that same drive and ambition as you. That, yeah. There's nothing you can do about that, unfortunately. Right, and, that's, and that's not your problem. That's not your problem. Um, finding the right people is major. Yes. Urban P said that it is. Um, how, how I've been you, working how, on how, that. You said you are working on that, or yeah, I've been working on that because I'm. I am, um, you know, as a Pisces, we want to be so nice and let everybody in, but not everybody has 
good intentions and not oh. everybody has your best interests and so yeah I the older that I get I've just been so leery of who I lay in my space who yes. I allow in my space who I talk yes. to what I watch I mean all kind of stuff no, so um now what I've been doing is I swear I've just been saying look universe God please just send me like-minded people and yes. it's been working it has been yes. working because um like Brienne my friend Brienne I was telling you about yeah. she has so many like different friends and she just like hooked me up with them so now I have partnerships with uh marketing companies and stuff thanks to her and it's just like yeah. all within the month of January yeah so yeah. I'm telling you if you just put it out there it happens yeah, I, I, I definitely believe that. And um, I'll, I'll honestly say for me, like coming back to the city, um, like like I don't have a lot of friends. Like I know a lot, yeah, of, people, a lot of people know me, but like I don't have a lot of homegirls where I can be like, bitch, it's Sunday, let's Saturday, let's get dressed, let's go do this, or let's go have a cocktail so we can talk about what you want to do or what you want. I don't have, I don't really have that. And so... Um, for me, it could be a little bit challenging because the thing that I'm into, something like I said, something so simple as just getting dressed up and going to have a cocktail or going to dinner. A lot of a lot of people are not into that, and and I think really big, and I want to be around other women who think really mm -hmm. big. And although I might not be into what they're into, I probably could assist them in some way, and then they could assist me in some way. And you know, it's just like it's yeah. just it just works. You know, like we're not using each other for for the bad, but we really yeah. just trying to help grow and motivate each other. So yeah. finding the right people. Yeah, I have two. I have, fortunately, I have two friends here okay. um, that I can just think of right off the bat. My friend Shatika and my friend Joan. Okay. Those are my girls. Like, I'll call and be like, all right, let's get dressed. Let's have a photo shoot. Like, we need to get some content out. And they're yeah. like, all right, let's do it one day. Um, yeah. So I do have them here, which I'm so grateful for them because we are always um, – just helping each other motiv and motivating each other and keeping each other up on uh, just on top of stuff. And, you know, they're mothers, too. So, yeah, it's we got, I mean, it takes a village. It takes a village. It does. It takes a village. Okay, I would say this because I know it's women on here, but I really wish women would just kind of get out of their head this whole, like, independent thing. Like, I, I was like that. I know. And, 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 and I think you know, there was a time in my life when I was a little bit younger, when in my early 20s, I was just like independent, independent, not realizing that when you keep saying you're independent, that means one. Yeah, that and that's what you're going to attract. Yeah. You're trying to do everything by yourself. Yes, you saying you don't need no homegirls. You saying I don't need yep. no man. I'm going to do it. And then, and then as you get older, you're like, oh, well, hmm. I really would like to be in the company of these type of people. So let me quit putting that out in the universe. So um, I think it is important to really have all these these different homegirls and these friends because like you said you can motivate and push each other's oh my god it's so important let me see it is. who is going here everybody said that um very inspiring very encouraging right. yes i wish i could see the comments <laughs> oh my god can't believe okay people who think people who think that you are usually small-minded people could never dream of doing what you do that is true. That is true. That is true. That's because they don't see it in themselves. That's crazy. Yeah, and a lot of times, too, like, being from, like, a small city, too, I've noticed that I keep a lot of stuff, like, even from my family, like, some of the stuff that I do, I don't even share it until it happens. Yeah. Because I don't want no one no one else's fears or projections to get, yep. in, get on to me or my brain, like, Okay, should I be doing this? Yep. Like my life coach, uh, when I went and got certified for that, I didn't tell nobody until after. Well, that's good because somebody probably mm -hmm. would have tried to deter you. So, mm -hmm. okay, so um, a gentleman said, What about some advice for men? Give me something, anything. I'm a Pisces too, by the way. Boy, we ain't got no advice for you. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Pisces men, um, Pisces Woo! men, y'all play, play too much. No, y'all do. I do play too much, but um, I would just say, what kind of advice do you want? You're a Pisces man. He doesn't really say. He just Pisces doesn't... man just got to get a, a hold of their emotions. Yes, absolutely. They do. I think uh, I uh to... he's like, give me some advice. I know. I used to date a Pisces guy. A Pisces. Me too. Crazy, right? But the one thing I like too that, much that they do, and I will say that Pisces men. 
they are providers. They are protectors, honey. They, you know, they might be playing too much, but they will have your back. Mm -hmm. And um, they are emotional. So, it, you know, like if you yeah. step out of your emotional side and be straightforward and communicate, I think that you will go a long way. That That is my advice to a Pisces man. Um, See, I dated a Pisces man when I was younger, like <laughs> yeah. 17. So yeah. I yeah. really can't say. Uh, I was married to a cancer man, but that's another day, another story. Oh, you were. <laughs> No, yes, married. exactly. Okay. Yes, I was married. I um was married for almost eight years wow. to my son's dad. Yep. Wow. And things just didn't work out. You know, people do their own thing. Are you and dating? They, um, Are you dating? Have you been able to? Um, I was, but right now I swear to you, I'm just like I don't know. I don't know what it is <laughs> with me right now, but it's just like I'm just so focused on like yeah. You got like time my goals and stuff. Yes, and I I think too. Now that I'm walking in the woman that I know that I am. Yes. I'm like, okay, we finally here. We finally yeah. doing it, girl. Yeah. I'm like, I'm attract exactly the man that I want for me. You know, because I remember being like, like two three years ago. I'm like, oh my god, I want this man. I want a man to do this and do this. But it's like, girl, you're not even doing. You can't even do that for yourself. So what do you yeah. want, a man? to do this so I think really just I'm really just focused on myself so that I can be who I want to attract absolutely Honestly. absolutely no I respect it I respect it dating is maiden I'm so tired of it I'm not dating either dating, <laughs> dating, dating is challenging okay like <sighs> dating is challenging but I um I made a vision board honey <laughs> and I made sure that I put on there that you know, that I did sometime this year find whoever I'm supposed to be with. I'm speaking to the universe. Oh, so you manifesting a man. Huh? You manifesting a man. I was I was in a relationship for prior to me having my daughter, I was in a relationship for ten years. Um mm. and so I'll be very honest, it dating is very <laughs> challenging for me because I was dating somebody in like early twenties. And mm. so, um, it, it, although it didn't work out, this man taught me a lot just about being a woman and just, and so, you know, I don't want anybody who's just like him, but I do, I do look for somebody who, who can challenge me, who can teach me things and, you know what I'm saying? So that's just kind of where I'm at. Have you ever written it down? Yes, honey. The, if I showed you, yes. I, I right, it. look, I ain't even gonna pull my notebooks out. Okay, I wrote, <laughs> I, I even wrote, a, <laughs> right. Okay, I even wrote a note to myself. So, <laughs> see, I did. I wrote a note to myself, just acknowledging certain things about me. Um, you know, the good and the bad, and things that I know yes. that I needed to like work on. And um, that is that is something that has allowed <laughs> me to become just just to have more peace in my life. Just about acknowledging uh, certain things about myself, which is what I was saying about you. I think it's an amazing thing that you can acknowledge something about yourself that somebody might say about you. You know, so mm -hmm. that's why I always ask yeah. for three adjectives that either your husband or your best friend would say about you, because it kind of gives you an opportunity to self-reflect. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, Definitely. It really does. Okay, hold on. Let me see what we got on here. Um, become who you want to attract. Absolutely. That's so true. That's what I'm saying. That is what I'm Absolutely. saying. You have to really be that. Because I'm Absolutely. like, if I want a man who's a millionaire and he got this, he got that, and he's doing this, he's doing that, but I'm not doing any of that. How the heck am I going to attract this man? Where am I even going to be to attract him? So you, <laughs> you, know? you just said something because I was watching something one day and this gentleman was basically saying that women think that they have to have a certain kind of degree or have certain kind of money for a man who is a millionaire. And that is that is not necessarily true. But mm -hmm. how do you know if those type of men, how do you know where you need to be? Like you need, exactly. to, you need to be in those areas where mm -hmm. those type of men are. And so I think it is very, very it's very important. Um, somebody said manifest that. Yes, girl, I'm manifesting him, okay? Like, I'm, 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 speaking, I'm speaking it to existence. <laughs> I guess yeah, I so know, my I, friend, Dominique. Huh? Um, 
my friend Dominique, her name is Brown and ben, Brown and Bendy on her social media platform. Okay. She has a YouTube channel. She's a mom too. She just had another baby. But okay. she's like a um what would I call her? She's like this she's amazing. She's a coach too, but okay. she told me to um write to write a letter to myself and to write it in present tense, like as if I'm doing it already. So whatever it is that I wanna do, she's like write it down as if it's already happening, write how you feel, you know. And read it day and night. And I've been doing that since probably for about three weeks now. And every time I read it, yes, every time I read it, it's like, ah! It's just like, it just trips me out. Somebody said, what's her name? How can they, what's your homegirl's name on you on YouTube? Oh, I'll type it in here. I wonder if y'all can see what I type. I don't know. Brown and Bendy. She's amazing. See if y'all can see that. You guys see that? Brown and Bendy. So make sure you follow her homegirl. So she can give you some motivation um, because that's really what it's about. Just her YouTube channel. Oh my goodness. I mean, you can binge watch her YouTube channel. It's so motivating and uplifting. And she really teaches you how to tap into your subconscious mind and yeah. rewire um, just those thoughts that you have, you know, those negative yeah. thoughts are those thoughts that are holding you back. She really helps you to just like go for it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I am Crystal Jordan said, hey, Ariel. Hey, girl. Uh, Ken said, Pisces are emotional. Thanks a lot. <laughs> <laughs> we like, we like, we're like emotional gangsters. Like I always tell people like either I am a nice fish or I'm a shark. So because oh. you know, it's two of them. I, just, I know. I That's realize it's two fish. Yes. Wait a minute. How you doing? We swimming we swim in all these directions. Yeah. We, just, yeah. we just try to go with everybody's flow instead of Sometimes uh, we don't know how to just go with our flow. That's that's why, like, now on my social media, I'm going to be very honest. You will see me constantly post that this year is very personal to me because mm. um, although I genuinely love assisting and helping and, and teaching and, um, like, the kind of coaching that I do is more like business and, like, uh, you know, retail and visual merchandising. But um, for the most part, like, 2021 is very personal uh, for me to really acknowledge certain things about myself and to really go after the things that I mm. want. Um, I just think that it's so imperative just to kind of take that time um, because I'll tell you, I'll give you a quick little thing. The other day I was on Instagram scrolling and my two-year-old, right, told me, Mommy, you need to relax. I was like, what? She, like, you and she, pro she proceeded to take the phone out of my hand and to me that meant mm. you're not showing me no attention you're not you're not giving me that time mm. that I, so I was like you know I took my phone and I was like uh, right okay then I set it down because I'm like you know yeah um, if anybody follows me they know like I am all about my daughter I'm all about teaching her uh, that she is an amazing person and she's a great person and she's a beautiful person so um, when she's telling me that she needs my attention and I'm not giving it to her even at two, I'm, I got I had to put my phone down, you know. Yeah. So let me see. No clubhouse today, Ariel. I am walking on the stage with her. I am Crystal Jordan said that. <laughs> no clubhouse today. I have not been feeling good. I just was not feeling good. I'm like, oh, so yeah. I've been in the bed all day. Well, thank you. It's about to be that time of the month, so it's oh. coming up on me. So, yeah, I know it's creeping up on you. I appreciate you taking yeah. the time to get on here. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, so, I was so excited about this. I know. So I have, I have to ask you two more questions. It's 704, and I want to hold you. So with social media and just the world being crazy, what is that one thing that you just would want to put, like, a mommy mute on? It could be the music. It could be the twerking. It could be the... The cussing is what what is the one thing you want to put a mute on that you feel like your child shouldn't know anything about? Oh my goodness. These little stinky games. I'm tired of Roblox, Robux, okay. whatever it is. Okay. I wanna get that out of here. Fortnite, all of that. I wanna Okay. Out. Okay. I'm so tired of it. Okay. Okay. So I That's what I would put a mommy mute. And the twerking too. You know, I'm all yeah. for the you know, I'm I'm all for the having fun and stuff, but Yeah. It's like, come on, y'all, please, do something else. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I totally agree. Um, you know, I'm not gonna lie. In my early twenties, I was a twerker, and um, there was. I mean, I am too. Okay, it's I, not I, on the internet. I, there you go. So I definitely like I. I think that there's absolutely nothing wrong with twerking, 
But I do think that every time there's a challenge or every time it, 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 it uh, requires us to twerk or this or that, I don't think that we have to necessarily do it. And I, and I would say that, I'll just say that for me personally as a mom, because my daughter is literally on my hip all the time. Okay, so she is, she watches everything that I do. Like, mm -hmm. you know, I would consider myself to be a diva. So I love to model. I used to model back in the day. So now my daughter, she looks at my pictures. She's got her hand on her hips. Mm. She's got to put her leg out the way she sees me. So she's watching everything that I do. And so, you know, yeah. if I'm busting it and dropping it and doing this, and if my daughter does it, and then somebody says, like, And now's a crucial time for her mind. It is. And, and what's the first thing people going to say? Chanel, your daughter being grown. It's like, yeah. Yeah, she's not being grown. She's just watching what we are showing what her. She or she's me. Yeah. Right. So I think definitely that would be the one thing that I, um, wait a minute. I think that would be one of the things that I would definitely put a mute on. It's just so much twerking. Um, but then, you know, but as mothers or as parents, we are the ones who have the control of what our kids yeah. see. So we have to, we have to acknowledge that too. Um, Miss Ashley, for you, said, how do you push through your setbacks? Ooh. How do you push through your setbacks? Man, yeah. you just have to look at it as a lesson. Mm -hmm. I look, I've been here lately, not always, but I've been just looking at everything as a lesson. Like, okay, this didn't happen. Why didn't it happen? What yeah. are you trying to tell me? Like, do I need to prepare better? Do I need to figure, do I need to do something else? Am I doing it for the wrong reasons? Yep. Um, maybe it just wasn't meant for you, but I think you have to take every single thing, whether it's a win, a loss, a setback, uh, a pause, whatever it is, you have to look at it and figure out what the lesson is in it because every single thing that happens is a lesson and it happens for a reason. Setbacks and all. Um, I've had a few setbacks this year yeah. waiting to, because I still haven't announced my coaching. Um, I'm just waiting for this one thing to happen okay. so that I can drop it. But, um, it was supposed to happen on January 22nd, and it did. Okay. okay. And at first, I was like, oh, here we go. Not now. But I just thought, like, okay. Yeah. Take that back. And yeah. I realized, like, you ain't really prepared. You have to get a little bit more prepared. So there that was, yeah. Yeah, me thinking, like, I, I just had to think, at, look at it like that instead of thinking, like, oh, God, here we go again. You know, and get down and depressed and upset about it. I just was like, okay, this has been put on pause. I got to get it get it going. I got to, you know, be a little bit more prepared. There you go. And now here it is. So, and now since I did that, what I was waiting for, they were like, okay, we're not going to do that, but now we're going to do this. And it was, it's a thousand times better See? than what I was waiting on. Yeah. So it's like you just have to look at everything with a positive mind. It's hard as it may be. You just I have to look at it with a positive mind and as a lesson and figure yes. out why this is happening and what is, what is the lesson in it. Absolutely. Um, I would definitely say that um, we tend to think that when things don't go our way, that it is just such a, a horrific thing. But exactly what you just said is that the universe knew that you weren't necessarily ready to accept whatever it is yes. that you were saying that you wanted. And so, um, you know, people people may not realize it, but you know that you didn't have everything aligned. You just the alignment. So. I think anytime something doesn't necessarily go your way based on how you wanted it to go, then just kind of take the time to step back and look at yourself from the outside and just figure yeah. out, okay, what do I need to do so that I can push forward? Because I've had, I had a lot of setbacks in 2020. Like, I, I'll be very honest, like, um, you know, things didn't necessarily go my way uh, that I anticipated when I moved back to my city was something that I was trying to do. And it really had kind of like put me in a dark place. And it, 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 I, I felt like, like, damn, really? Like, really? Mm. And it was really tough for me. And it wasn't that I did anything wrong. It was just things just didn't work out in my favor. And so instead of continuing to beat myself and to be in my head, like I had to just like mm -hmm. really get out of my way and realize like, girl, you've, you still accomplished all these other things. Yeah. So there's, there's a thousand different things that you still could be doing but don't let this one thing, although this is something you really wanted, don't let it deter yeah. you and beat you up. So, um, you know, setback sometimes really just, it's exactly what it is. It's a setback. It gives you the opportunity to yeah. take your time. To sit back. To sit yeah. back. It's exactly what it is, you know? So um, I, 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 I cannot stress that enough. Um, people think that.
happen and, and the people that you might see on social media, the people that you follow, those people, they, they go through stuff. And I'm here to say that I do go through stuff. You know what I'm saying? So I'm just not one of those type of people that's on yep. social media that's like cry me a river about it. You know, and so that right there will make people Same. think yep. that you're not dealing with anything. So let's see if we have anybody yep. else. Let's go back. Um, a setback is just a setup for your next level of greatness. Absolutely. It really is. I mean, yeah. It really is. Yes, um, it is. I love that. Evaluate, reevaluate, revisit the drawing board. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Get you a notebook and I call it a brain dump. So anything that, that's on your mind, let it be good or bad, write it down. Mm -hmm. Write it down. And then come back and look at it and say, like, okay, so these are the things that I um am dealing with. <laughs> Who can I get that can assist me? Or what do I need to do so that I can push forward or take this weight off my back? It doesn't necessarily yeah. have to be uh, such a bad thing. And I want people to really understand that. Um, she said brain yeah. dumps are great. Brain dumps are amazing. I know a lot of people are like, what's a brain they dump? Are. A brain dump is just simply taking your notebook. Um, for me, I, I tend to kind of break mine down. I do um, like my challenges. Um, I do things that I feel like I excel in. Um, I do things that I know I need help with. I do things that are bothering mm. my love life and my motherhood. I just brain dump everything. And then and I just put it all on paper. Back. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. See, what I do is I write down, um, I'm really like into the spiritual stuff. So uh, <laughs> on like the new look, movies look, and look stuff, I I'll write. Right here. Honey, I'm with you, honey. I got my Christmas. I don't play. I don't okay. play. Look, same one in with this. Yes, girl. <laughs> so um, I like to write down, like, stuff that is, I feel like is holding me back, like fear, anxiety, um, yeah. trying to be perfect and stuff like that. I write that down. I burn it. I'm like, I release it. Get out of here. Yep. There you go. I've done that, too. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that really works because you feel like. Ooh, I'm releasing it. And a lot of things, too, this might sound a little crazy, but I'll sleep with, um, I'll type in, like, today. Yeah. yeah. When I, I was getting sick, I put in healing, medit healing sleep meditation. And I took me a nap, and I put that meditation on, and it was just saying, like, affirmations, like, you are healed, you are this, you are that. And I just went to sleep, and I woke up, and I'm like, okay, I feel a little better. Yep. Yep. Okay, yeah. hold on. We got... We'll do one more question, guys, and I'll let Miss Ariel go. Um, she said, "Can you share how? Oh, can you share how y'all ask for help? You want to go? You want to?" Girl, this uh, <laughs> is still a challenge for me asking for help. Um, Cause sometimes I honestly like me. I'm like the. I'm like the one in my family, so it's like. Who can I ask, you know? And that's just kind of tough for me. So right now I'm working on, like, I don't know. Like, I still have a problem with asking because it's kind of like I don't have anybody to ask. I understand. Um, and you don't want to just, like, I wouldn't come to you and be like, should I help you with this, blah, 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 blah. Maybe I will now, but. Because um, <laughs> it's just kind of crazy. Like, somebody just coming to you asking you for help that you just met. But, um. I don't know. I think, though, you just got to do it. I think we just got to get out of hearing no. Because I'm yeah. that person, like, don't tell me no. I don't want to hear no. Yeah. Uh, I'm not even going to give you the opportunity to tell me no. So that's yeah. why I don't ask, because I don't want people to tell me no. But we got to get out of that. Like, Once again, a no is not honest. always bad. You're being honest, though. Yeah, honest. I am. I'm telling you, I will. Honey, if I see somebody in a canoe over here and I know I can't swim, I'm going to try to swim before I say, hey, let me get in the canoe. <laughs> I'm going to be swimming, drowning. But um, <laughs> I'm working on it, though. I'm yes. working on it. Yes. Um, I'll say for me, I'll be very honest. There was a time that asking for help was really, 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 really tough for me. And and that is because I'm the oldest of six children. Um, that is because a lot of pressure has um, always been put on me. I felt like at a young age, I was having to be more of a parent versus being yes. a child. Yeah, and yes. so having um, that childhood stripped away. Yeah, so at yes. an early age, like I was the one, like yourself, having to figure out how to solve problems and how to solve issues, and even like just you know, in my household, that is what I was doing. Yes. So, 
you know, now as I'm getting older, you know, um, growing up, I always kind of felt like I was the one who had to always have a solution. You get what I'm saying? That, like, like, I got to know. And so, um, you know, I'll be very yes. honest. I think that that was also one of my issues. And I, now I'm just giving y'all my, I'm giving y'all my tea. But I think that that was probably one of my issues, too, in my past relationship. Um, you know, not necessarily mm. just allowing him to be the man that he was supposed to Me be. Me, too. So us yes. women, we say we want men to do this and to do that and help us with this. But we don't even know how to really accept it. You know, like we don't, we say we want it, and then when guys give it to us, we don't really know how to take it. So, um, I'll be very honest, just like what Ariel said, you know, um, I've, I've gotten a lot better with asking for help because I have a child now, and so I can't be so stuck on thinking that somebody's gonna tell me no. I have to be okay with the yes or no because I yeah. do need help, you know, I, I have a child, and so, um, it, it's it's different. It's not just me where I just have to figure out the solution, but sometimes mm -hmm. I, I, I do need help. I'm a mother now. And so um, I think for me becoming a mother, because you, I'm definitely in a different mindset, <clears throat> excuse me, um, asking has just become a little bit more easier for me. But um, it, I'll be honest, it has not always been the most easiest thing to do. So, so. Yeah. It is 717. Yes, so my website is in my um, bio. You can book me through my website. Um, okay. Yeah, just follow me on my social media platform. Okay. 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 And then also, so I want to let you guys know, first of all, I want to tell you guys, thank you so much for tapping in today. This is um, the first, the very first of Moms Unscripted. I'm so excited for everybody who joined in. Um, eventually, I will be doing uh, one-on-ones and interviewing these ladies, and we will be streamed from Roku. Mm -hmm. So if you miss it on our um, IG Live, don't worry. Come February the 24th, you will actually be able to go on to Roku so that you can see all of the interviews. Mm -hmm. Yay! I'm so excited. Okay, I said I wanted to be on TV, honey, and I'm going to be on TV in 2021. Here so it is. I am so excited. I've spoken into my life. Um, and so <laughs> I love I'm it. Saying, Every Wednesday at 6 o'clock, I will have another and another and another amazing woman join me um, so that we can discuss all different things through motherhood. Um, because once again, I just want women to know that you're not alone. And although people may not necessarily get on social media and always tell you everything that they have going on, we are human. We are just like you. Yeah. And we go through the same thing or we probably know somebody. And so, um, you know, just being able to help and assist you so that you can push through. So, Ariel, thank you so much for being my first Thank guest. you. So thank you. Thank you. You are so good at this, Chanel. Thank I'm you. so excited for you. Thank you. Because I, let me, I'll just tell you guys really quick. So, like I told you, um, when I had my daughter, I just was like in a really dark space um mm. and one of the things that i started doing was i started actually just doing interviews just you know interviewing women and then actually writing their stories and linking them you know putting them on the control mm. website but then i thought wow these stories are pretty amazing and they like other women like um another young lady on here nay day like she was a, a woman that i um interviewed and just kind of like hearing her story and some of the like it pushed me and it motivated me and it allowed me to know that i was not I wasn't alone out here. And so yes, I, started I love like, it. Yeah, I started thinking like, well, dang, if I enjoy um, these interviews and really hearing their voice and hearing the vulnerability, what would make me think that other women wouldn't enjoy this? So I brought yeah. it to the owner of Control Magazine just to kind of see what he thought about it. And he was like, I think, I think that's something that we could do. So I'm very grateful for Julian for even allowing me to do this. And I really hope that it does push and motivate um, other women to just be there, to be their best and to realize that they're not alone. Mm -hmm. Right? And it so, is. Um, it is. Yeah. So you guys can follow me at Chanel Scales. Um, if you ever need any help with your visual or your retail world, um, my website is ChanelScales.com. Um, but yeah, but until then, I will see you guys next Wednesday at 6 o'clock. Yes. Bye, Chanel. Thank Bye, you. Girl. Thank you so much. Bye. Have a good night. Bye, everybody. You too.